What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson, and welcome to another episode of Burn Down. So, on this episode, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over this bad boy. So, this is a Holly Terminator X Max. This one has transmission control. They have options that do not, like the one that is in the Malibu. So, how do you know that you're buying the right one? You log on there, you decided that you want to pull the trigger on a Holly, and then you start looking. This is LS1, LS6, transmission control different injectors. So we're going to cover all of that stuff right now, right here in this video. And if you have any questions, you can leave, you know, questions in the description and I will answer them. But I'm hoping that we clear up uh, any, anything, you know, that any of the questions you may or may not have being a beginner. Um, if you're not a beginner, you're familiar with this, this video probably isn't for you. If you have a junkyard motor, you got a project, you're looking to go Holly EFI and you're wondering which one to choose. This is a good video for you, so stick around. All right, so without further ado, what I'd like to do is we will just jump straight on the laptop and then I will walk you through and kind of explain the different options and things that you may or may not need depending on the motor that you have. So let's get into it. All right, so here we go. We're starting at Google. We'll go over to Holly. I've already been here, but holly.com, you punch it up. So this is right off the bat where you're probably getting confused so maybe Holly can take note if you go to products you know LS power and then you say you go to LS EFI bam it just comes up and it starts listing stuff and then you're reading it off and you're confusing yourself so this is what I want you guys to do when you go to Holly go to brands go to Holly EFI this is gonna give you the choices on the type of EFI and it actually, so now if we click on our Terminator X, brings you to the home page for the Terminator X. So I don't know if, if you guys have made it to this page or not, or if you just found the Terminator X and started looking through them. But Holly has lots of good resources here. They tell you pretty much why you need it. They tell you all the stuff it will do. But what I want to do is I want to scroll down to here and take you straight to the resources that they have set up. So the black crank sensor. It's found on 24X motors. The gray crank sensor will be found on the 58X motors. And just for hindsight or just for your knowledge later on, if you have a 24X, this is not going to work on it and vice versa. You need the gray plug for the 58 and black for the 24X. But also that helps you designate which one you have because they're both on the side of the block behind the starter. Um, so that that is an easy telltale sign of which one you have. The other telltale sign is year, because I always ask people what year motor um, from, let's just go with truck engines, so from 99 to like 04, or I want to say maybe 05, they all have the black sensor here, so they have this on the side of the block with the black, um, and then on top of the engine, they have the cam sensor on the back by the oil pressure sensor. So if you have a 24X motor, it's going to have the black sensor on the side of the block above the starter motor. So if you take your starter motor off, or you look back there, this will be black. And then on the top rear of the engine, you're going to have um, the cam sensor up in the back on the top. And also this uh, right here will have the two holes on the cover, on the valley cover on the top for your knock sensors. So all of that will designate that you have a 24X motor because all that stuff is found on this one. On this guy, you have the gray plug on the side, and then you're going to have a cam sensor on the front cover uh, where your balancer is. There will be a, a sensor on the cover, and then you will also have the knock sensors on the side of the block, and those are black, and you will not have provisions in the valley cover for knock sensors. So... And then this is a newer, newer model year. I want to say 06, maybe 07 and up. We'll, ha we'll have this. I could be wrong on the year, so don't hammer me. You can leave it in the comments what the actual years are. I'm just going off memory um, from what I understand. Next thing on the chart, um, injector identification chart. So you basically take your injector plug, unplug it, and look down at it. So which one do you have? This is an EV1. This is an EV6. And then this is basically a truck Molitech 2 injector. And this will be like a long skinny plug. This is on all of your trucks. Um, if you're going to use these, or this style injector, this style injector, or this style injector. So here is the catch with the injector choice. 
you don't want to choose your X-Max for the injector that is on the motor now. You want to choose your X-Max for the injector you intend to use for that application. So for instance, if you're using like a DECA 80, it's these guys. It's going to be an EV1 plug. Um, some of the later model trucks will have the EV6 and cars and things will have these, LS3 style. And then all of your truck um, fuel injectors are going to look like this for the most part. Uh, especially all the early model ones. These ones, this is okay, but the problem with this guy here is there's not a lot of options to upgrade later. If you want to go turbo or you want to do some other stuff, you're going to have a goofy connector on the end. So I would suggest, you know, looking at your injector choice for what your application is going to be. If it's just a stock driver down the road thing, you're not going to go crazy. Maybe just cam swap and you're going to keep standard injectors in there. Th this is fine. Um, you know, you can go with that, but I would suggest looking at the options for the later model stuff. I have this plug on two sets of different injectors that I have, so I run the EV1 um, on the one that I have. The next thing is the connections. Um, this really isn't that specific to you guys per se, but what I want to show you is the difference in the two. This is the Terminator X, and this is the X Max. You'll notice. This has the two connections in the main power with the map. This one has four connections with the main power and the map. And the difference between this and this is this one controls the transmission. This one just fires the motor. So that is the difference in these two and the price range. Do you run a conventional transmission, power glide, TH400, uh, like a 700R4, I guess, if you're feeling froggy? TH350 if you're really you know into it or whatever you're gonna run this guy here it doesn't control the transmission at all it just worries about the motor and then transmission is separate if you want to run a 4L60E because you're really feeling froggy and you like playing with fire you can run this guy here this will also run the 4L80E um, as well so that will control the transmission and run the motor all in one shot so that is pretty much it as far as, you know, I wanted to explain for you guys. Um, what I'll do too is let's just go over here real quick. So say you, you went this way, LS power, where are we at? LSEFI systems, and it just pops up and starts banging on you with these guys. So really quick, so the 24X, and then this is an EV1 plug, and then this LS multiport fuel injection kit. So this guy right here would be used for... A conventional transmission, turbo 350, 400 power glide, where you don't need transmission control, and it would be on an earlier motor where it would have the black plug on the side, it would have the provisions on top in the valley cover for your knock sensors, and your uh, cam sensor would be in the rear. So this is for that type of application. The one next to it here is exactly the same as this, except it's the X Max. So it's the same style EV1 for the fuel injectors here and here. The only thing this does differently than this is this will control the transmission. And then again, you jump over to this guy. If you look at it, this is still a 24, so all three of these control the same year, years of motors. But this one does the truck plugs, um, and this one does an EV1, which would be like a DECA 80 or like some of the Bosch stuff. Um, and then you jump down to here. So this guy... And this guy, like this one right here, it's the Moltec 2. So this, all these still run the same motor. They're just swapping out right here, which is your injector plug. So this would basically run truck injectors um, with a conventional transmission. And then the next guy over here, this is a 58X EV6, and then it's an LS, you know, EFI. So now you're with the later model motor with the gray plug. And then this is an EV6 injector, so this would be like a later model truck engine would, would do this or a, a car application. Um, so you fast forward, you get down here, you, and you can go back and reference back and forth. I just want to get to like an X-Max. So now we're at an X-Max down here. This is a 58X EV6 for your fuel injector plug. And then obviously this has a transmission control for your 4L60, uh, 4L80. So it says it all right here. <clears throat> One last thing too. Um, the drive-by wire, and then I don't know, 
Let me see if I can get back to it. I don't know if they designate that. So let's go to brands, only a five. So if you want to do drive by wire with your throttle pedal, uh, which is a, the electronic throttle pedal. Um, I don't know where it actually designates it, but if you want to drive by wire with a throttle pedal, you need the X Max. So this is the only one and it'll be an extra added harness. And then you can do the drive by wire with the X Max only. So basically, you want creature comforts and later model stuff, X Max is the way to go with your transmission control and electronic pedal control. If you literally just want to throw an engine in, cam swap it, have a standard throttle body that is, is driven by cable, like my car's old. I just have a cable that runs off the pedal. Um, and I tried to keep it cheap and basic. You can run this guy here. So that is pretty much it. They go into diagnostics. There's a bunch of cool stuff you guys can read here. I hope that answered your questions. Um, let me turn the camera back on real quick, and then, uh, yeah, we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so I hope that kind of helps and answers a lot, a lot of questions that you guys may or may not have. But I think every time I've searched for, like, the Terminator X stuff, I don't go that route to get to the information. And it's funny, I know I've seen it before, like when I first started, I searched Holly and searched to find that page, and that just, you know, cleared up a lot of questions I had. But um, yeah, so you look for the color of the plug that is behind the starter, which is gonna be your crank sensor plug color, and that is an easy telltale designation. But the other really simple one too, is you can just look right under the intake manifold. If there's holes there, typically, you know, unless somebody's doing some funny business, it's going to be a 24X motor. And then the other simple one too, even if you didn't go that far, is you look at the cover where the timing cover is. If it has a sensor on there, it's going to be typically a 58X. Um, and if it does not have a sensor on there, typically that sensor is going to be in the back of the block by the oil pressure on top, which is going to be a 24X. So that's a lot of the confusion other than, you know, LS1, LS6. So pretty much all your truck motors, their LS1, but when they say like LS6 stuff, it's essentially same block, same size. It's all similar stuff for the most part. So um, don't let that fool you. Just look for your 24X, your 58X. The year of the motor kind of gives that away too. And then um, other than that, buy the injector harness for the injectors you're going to use, not the ones you have. So if you have truck injectors, because um, the truck like junkyard pullout, are you going to use the 24 pound injectors or 36 pound or whatever they have? Or are you going to go 85? You're going to go boost later. You're going to run a bigger injector. Buy the proper harness for the injectors you're going to use, not necessarily the ones you have. So there's that tip as well. And then the only other thing is do you need transmission control or not? And then aside from that, um, look at sensors. If you're going to run turbos, you're going to need extra sensors uh, to monitor boost. If you want to run a fuel pressure sensor, I highly recommend that because with EFI, um, it is sensitive to fuel pressure because the computer can only tune the fuel that's there. And if you don't have a fuel pressure sensor, the computer will think it's a static 60 pounds or whatever you tell it it's static at, and it will do the math based on that without fail. So when your fuel pressure drops, it's still gonna think you have X amount. And if you have a fuel pressure sensor, it can um, compensate a lot faster because it'll see the pressure drop and compensate um, with the fuel map and everything else. So I would recommend running a fuel pressure sensor as well. They do have the provision and all the harnesses for that, I believe, but the sensor itself is an add-on. So um, get yourself a fuel pressure sensor and then um, obviously you gotta fire the alternator. Soft Mechanics makes a nice plug and play alternator slash, um, what is that? It's a alternator, plug and play alternator slash flex fuel sensor. And then it's all integrates with the harness really nice. Uh, Happel does a great job with that. Or if you're like, I don't really need all that fancy stuff, they sell a pigtail for like 17 bucks. Or if you're really cheap, you can just get an even cheaper pigtail, but then you have to look up if it needs a diode or whatever. Um, so I don't know there. I can't answer that. I'm sure you can look that up. But yeah, for the most part, that's it other than USB. If you want to tune by laptop, which you don't need to if you have the 3.5, you don't really have to. Um, but if you want to get that far into it, you will have to get the the Holly CAN bus to USB. So that is pretty much it. I hope I answer all your questions. Leave every question you guys have in the comment section. 
Um, if you're on here and I got something wrong, please point that out. I don't, I'm not going to cry or jump up and down. I'm trying to help you guys, especially the beginners, um, get through this process, get your hot rod running so you can get out there and do some smoky burnouts and have a little fun. So I hope this answers your question. If not, you guys know what to do. Leave them below. I'm out. You guys know what to do, leave them below, I'm out.